The stock of Lululemon is down 29% from its previous all-time high. And after the Canadian apparel brand reported its Q4 earnings numbers, the stock actually dropped by up to 20% in a single day, losing roughly 10 billion US dollars in market capitalization. For context, the last time the stock of Lululemon dropped so significantly was during the COVID pandemic. So what exactly is happening at this premium apparel brand? Is this post earnings sell-off justified by the suboptimal business outlook? Or should the sell-off be regarded as an overreaction, providing intelligent investors with a fantastic opportunity? We'll discuss all of these things in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, hi there, my name is René Zellman and this channel is all about intelligent long-term investing. And the first chapter of this video will be devoted towards the reaction to Lululemon's Q4 earnings results. Why is the stock of Lululemon down so significantly? And does the apparel sports brand stand at an inflection point? Well, as we said in the introduction of the video, the stock is actually down around 30% year to date compared to a 9% gain of the S&P 500. And clearly that's a pretty miserable performance. So again, what exactly was causing Lululemon's extreme share price drop? Well, I would say that at first glance, the results look pretty decent because the Q4 results, both top and bottom line, exceeded the updated guidance given by management in early January. Net revenue in Q4 increased 16% to 3.2 billion US dollars and grew 90% in Lululemon's 2023 fiscal year. Net revenue for the Americas region increased by 9% year over year and the international net revenue actually increased 54% year over year. The gross margin of Lululemon increased 430 basis points to 59.4%, which is pretty much an all-time high for Lululemon. And as a result, gross profit increased 25% to 1.9 billion US dollars. And finally, just to wrap up the numbers part, the operating margin of Lululemon also improved and increased to 28.5% from just 11.3% in the fourth quarter of 2022. However, if we now take a look at some other metrics and also take into account some of the comments management made during the following earnings call. Well, then we can highlight that during the earnings call, the Lululemon CEO, Calvin McDonald, told analysts that visits to US stores specifically slowed at the beginning of the year and shoppers actually bought slightly less than a year earlier. He said, quote unquote, in the US is where we are really navigating the dynamic retail environment with the consumer that is a little soft coming into the year. Yandy yeah, described decreased US store visits and the lower consumer spending aligned pretty well with the generally negative trend that we can see in that industry. Yeah, and on top of the slowed visits to US stores, the forecasts made by management for the upcoming fiscal year were also disappointing investors. Lululemon forecasts revenue to be around 10.8 billion US dollars, which represents growth of around 11 to 12 percent. Again, this is well below the 19 percent year over year growth posted in the last or, or current fiscal year. And this forecast is actually below analyst estimates and apparently not enough to justify Lululemon's current valuation. At least that's the perception by the broader market participants. Or maybe I should say this forecast and the reported growth didn't justify the valuation that Lululemon was trading at before reporting its Q4 numbers. And again, just to provide you some more context here, I think Lululemon traded at a price to earnings per share multiple of around 60 times before the Q4 results. Yeah, and if you now combine the two, the underwhelming North American US store visits with the underwhelming forecast for the next fiscal year, well, then you get the reaction you saw in Lululemon stock after the Q4 results. And you get the potential change in investor sentiment and the narrative surrounding the company in mainstream media, which in my view, all of a sudden is much more bearish. Okay, so again, those were the headline numbers, the headline results. Let's now look at Lululemon through the intelligent investors classes or lens. Because what I was just describing to you is what the quote unquote market was seeing. Because in my description of what is going on at Lululemon, the first chapter of this video, the extreme short term focus of the market is very well reflected in my view. I was mainly talking about the quarterly results and the one year guidance of the company. And I think therein, so in this short term focus, may lie the opportunity for the long term oriented investor. In fact, I would argue that when a company experiences a short term hiccup, this is what gets me excited because that's what creates opportunities for the more long-term focused investors. And I would argue that 
what is going on at Lululemon right now is not even a short-term business hiccup. It's rather a too demanding valuation that the company or the stock of Lululemon was trading at before the Q4 results. Your job as a long-term oriented, intelligent investor is to assess the long-term trajectory of the business, 5, 10, 15 years out, and not the performance over the next one, two, three, or four quarters. So if we now take a look at the trajectory the company has taken in the more recent past, I think there's very little to complain about. The company has developed very favorably. Lululemon definitely had a fabulous, fantastic post-pandemic run. And I think the more recent results are at least still pretty robust. The company is still growing at double-digit rates. The five-year top-line component annual growth rate is north of 20%. I think it's 24%. And on top of that, the yeah, Vancouver-based company is reducing a share count, leading to an even better growth rate on a per share basis. The five-year diluted earnings per share compounded annual growth rate, for example, is 27%. And finally, if we now compare the performance of Lululemon to other apparel companies, industry peers that oftentimes reported much worse earnings, I think the brand of Lululemon seems fully intact. And to maybe just add one final point here, Lululemon is also known to forecast fairly conservatively and to then beat its own forecast in the subsequent month. I think Lululemon has plenty of opportunities to continue growing, especially in international markets, in its man seg segment. It may continue to innovate and introduce new products. Management said it's expecting to open 35 to 40 stores in the next fiscal year, mainly in mainland China. Again, international revenue at Lululemon grew at a rate of 54%, which is absolutely stellar. And to me, it seems like the momentum, especially internationally, doesn't seem to be slowing. Although to be fair, the store opening count is actually slowing compared to the last fiscal year where Lululemon actually opened 56 stores. So again, is the market saturated here? Or are we starting to see signs of market saturation? Well, that's up to you to decide. Now, if we talk about the long-term trajectory of a business, we inevitably need to talk about competition. So what does the competition at Lululemon look like? Obviously, Lululemon is competing with other sport apparel brands like Nike and Adidas in particular. But I would say, especially in its more niche market, the yoga segment, the more premium sports apparel niche, competition seems to be increasing, especially in the US with brands like Alo Yoga, which arguably has become Lululemon's number one competitor, and Vuori. I hope I didn't butcher the pronunciation of that word. Obviously, both of these companies have a much smaller footprint, but they seem to be catching mindshare. I think at least that's the broader narrative surrounding the competition of Lululemon. However, I have to say that when researching for this video, I found that according to the 2022 Piper Sandler Fall 2022 Generation Z survey, Lululemon was actually the second most favorite apparel brand among Gen Z, just behind Nike. And on the topic of competition, I actually saw a very interesting chart on X or Twitter. Let me just show it to you. Basically, this chart here is showing that Lululemon's store traffic growth improved following an opening of an Arlo store nearby. So while the competitive threat seems very real and obviously should never be underestimated, I think the brand of Lululemon seems to be just fine. And in this context, we might already highlight some of the competitive advantages that Lululemon has that may shield it against competition. Obviously, Lululemon has reached a massive scale already. They have a much larger store footprint with around 700 stores worldwide. There's more brand awareness regarding Lululemon's brand. And all of this combined, I think, leads to lower customer acquisition costs for Lululemon against competitors. And I think competitors in that niche kind of will have a very hard time dethroning Lululemon. Which brings me to chapter number three. Would I personally ever invest in Lululemon? Well, to answer that question, let me just quickly highlight a few things that I like about the business and a few things I dislike. Let's start with the positive aspects. Well, first of all, I like the high growth that we are seeing. Obviously, growth seems to be slowing, but depending on the valuation, a company that can grow its top line at around 10%, maybe 10 to 15% annually, and on top of that is buying back its own share, can do fantastically for me as a shareholder. And I would argue that Lululemon is still a relatively unknown brand. I think brand awareness, even in the US, is only around 30% and internationally it's around 10%. So I actually see a lot of runway 
for future growth for Lululemon, again, especially internationally and in the men segment. Again, just to provide some more numbers on that thesis, around 53% of all physical Lululemon stores are located in the US and 64% in North America. Then what else do I like? Obviously, Lululemon is perceived as a prestige brand, arguably almost not quite, but almost a luxury brand, which gives the company pricing power and which is reflected in the very attractive margin profile produced by the company. I mean, we can just take a look at the prices that Lululem is charging on the website. I mean, let me just take a look at my phone. So obviously prices will be in Euro here, but Euro US is pretty much the same. So what, what am I seeing here? Well, a tax sleeve shirt, in white, super basic, 68 euros. So that should be a little more in US dollars. Then we have a hoodie for around 118 euros. A lightweight tennis dress for, again, 118 euros. A more typical leggings here for 98 euros. And again, those are definitely premium luxury prices for the products they are offering. But what I also have to say is that most people I have talked to before the video and whom I asked, what do they like about Lululemon? They have really highlighted the high quality nature of the products offered by Lululemon. And I would conclude that clearly Lululemon has some kind of cult following. And due to its brand and maybe also the perceived status that comes with owning Lululemon items, as I said, the company seems to have a lot of pricing power, which is reflected in the numbers. Let me just read to you an excerpt from a post by the Twitter user Mostly Borrowed Ideas, who discussed Lululemon and the superior margin profile compared to competitors. So he wrote, Perhaps nothing encapsulates how Lululemon has somewhat quietly graduated from a fashion cult brand to a scaled mainstream brand than looking at some of its numbers in comparison with Nike. During the 2013 to 2018 period, Lululemon's revenue and cross profit was consistently mid to high single digit as a percentage of Nike's revenue and cross profit. Since Lululemon has higher operating margin than Nike, operating profit was low double digit to mid teen as a percentage of Nike's operating profit. Then something changed in 2020. Lululemon has been on a tear for the last four years since the pandemic. Last year, Lululemon was almost 20% of Nike's sales, around 25% of Nike's gross profit and a whopping 37% of Nike's operating income. Given their financial years are different from each other, this isn't quite apple to apple, but even when we look at the last three years aggregate numbers, it still sort of depicts similar picture. During the 2021 to 2023 period, Nike generated 64 billion aggregate gross profit. Lulu posted 30.7 billion or 21.5% of Nike's. During this period, Nike generated 20 billion aggregate operating profit, whereas Lululemon posted 5.3 billion or 27% of Nike's. You may find this surprising, but Lulu generated these numbers by spending 10% of what Nike spends on advertising. Lululemon's performance in the last three or four years is nothing short of staggering and looking at a massive global brand such, a, such as Nike for comparison really highlights their height of success. Yeah, and what I will do is I will just show you the margin profile of Lululemon on screen right now in comparison to Nike. So here, for example, we have the gross margin profile of Nike and Lululemon. Let me now add on top of that the operating margin of both companies over time. And finally, here's the free cash flow margin generated by both businesses. And again, for comparison, let me now add Adidas as well. And you can already sense here that Lululemon seems to be a unique business in this sports apparel industry. Now again, just to not lose our train of thought here, we were talking about things that I personally like about Lululemon's business. And finally, what I want to highlight here is that I really like the distribution model that Lululemon has chosen because it is D2C, so direct to consumer and no third party distributor is involved. So the fact that you can only order Lululemon pro products via their website or if you go to a physical Lululemon store. This gives Lululemon more control about their offering and obviously it allows them to be more profitable. As I discussed earlier, when you look at the competitive threat regarding Lululemon, I think this omni-channel approach, the brand awareness combined with the store network, I think it surrounds the company by a decently wide moat. And finally, again, we, were, we are discussing if I would ever buy Lululemon. I also like the fact that, that, that they are reducing the share count. To be fair, they did so, so management did so at quite an elevated valuation. So at best, it was an okay valuation. I don't really think they were destroying shareholder value by buying back shares at, I don't know, say 50 times earnings. But again, 
I, find, I have a hard time assessing whether this was the best possible use of capital. Now, things that I dislike about Lululemon. Well, first of all, we were just talking about the margin profile of Lululemon, and I think there's not really much room left for continued margin improvement going forward. I think considering the industry Lululemon is operating in, the business is already pretty much optimized, optimized for profits. Then at the end of the day, Lululemon is a retail business. It's an apparel business which tend to be rather volatile in terms of the brand strength. And I have a very hard time assessing whether 10 years from now Lululemon's brand will be perceived as strong as today. Overall, I would say it's not a particularly attractive industry. Obviously, Nike has done fantastically over the last couple of decades, but Nike is, of course, also an outlier. The investing universe is basically littered by brands that were perceived to be premium luxury brands that no one is really talking about anymore today. Then if we think about the competitive advantages that Lululemon possesses, obviously I was just highlighting the store network, the scale that Lululemon has, but I don't think that's really the strong mode the company has. And arguably Lululemon has only one strong mode, which is the brand of Lululemon itself. So if we combine all, all of that, I don't have a very high conviction regarding the durability of the Lululemon brand. Could it still be as strong as today, 10 years from now? Of course. But I cannot really say this with a high degree of certainty. So for me to buy Lululemon's stock, which considering the business model and the margin profile, I would absolutely consider, I would want the stock to trade at a very attractive valuation. And if we lo now look at the valuation Lululemon is trading at right now, I'm not quite there yet. And what I should maybe also say in this context is that I personally have a very high hurdle rate. So I really want to earn returns of around 15% annually compounded. And in order to achieve these returns, I have to be quite selective. If you are demanding a lower rate of return, obviously you can make investments more easily than I do. But again, let, let's just have a look at the valuation that Lululemon is trading at after the post Q4 earnings sell-off. I will actually compare the valuation to Nike. So what we can see here is that Lululemon is trading at next 12 month free cash flow multiple of around 32, which is based on around a 17% free cash flow margin, which again is a is a 12 year high for the company. And considering that Lululemon just experienced a 30% drawdown, that's a pretty wild valuation the company is still trading at today. For comparison, Nike is trading at a slightly lower valuation, shouldn't say slightly, at a significantly lower free cash flow valuation of around 20 times. If we now look at the operating income multiple the companies are trading at, well then Lululemon is actually trading at a cheaper multiple than Nike. And finally, I looked at the last 12 month price to earnings per share multiple of both companies. Here Lululemon is trading at a multiple of around 25.5 and Nike is trading at a multiple of 26.5. So taking all of this into consideration, I can see why some investors are getting excited about Lululemon here. We have a company here that is experiencing a short-term hiccup, and as I said, might not even be considered a hiccup. It's just going through the natural phases of a business's life cycle. Growth will naturally slow, and of course, the valuation will have to come down to reflect that slower growth. To me, the brand seems fully intact. It seems to be a brand with pricing power and it still has quite some runway left in the coming years. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to valuation. And as I highlighted, I'm not quite there yet. So just to put a disclaimer in here, I, I don't own any Lululemon shares as of today, but if the share price of Lululemon continues to drop, I might buy the stock anytime. Okay, if you want to learn how to invest successfully, how to generate returns of 10, 12, 13, 14, 15%. If you want to follow proven processes and have a clear idea how to invest, I recommend you check out my mentoring program. I'll make sure to link the website, which outlines everything I have to offer in the description box down below. And with that, let's wrap it up here. Take care.